G'day, Mace is Doctor here, and today I'm going to present to you a deck profile on Box Jellyfish. Some people would like to call this Kraken Control, others would like to call this Sharks. Personally, I like to call it Box Jellyfish, not because it's named after the actual creature, but because it boxes in the opponent from winning. And this deck has already proven to be very formidable, and let's just get to the deck profile. So, first we have Butunful Princess. And this card hasn't been printed since Primal Origin in 2014. And this is a search of a deck where you summon it and banish it instantly and you get to search for a level 4 or lower fish monster from the deck. Now we have Buzzsaw Shark, which is one of the newer cards that came out in Eternity Code last year, which we had to think Eternity Code had a lot of water support, but anyway, with Buzzsaw Shark, you can target a water monster you control, including itself, and special summon a fish monster from the deck that has the same level but a different name, such as a uh, Lantern Shark, and both of these cards can be treated as a level 3 or 5 monster for the XC summon of a water uh, monster. Uh, the difference between these two is whereas Lantern Shark special summons from the hand and Buzzsaw searches from the deck, Buzzsaw prevents the monster from activating the effect, so Lantern Shark does not. That's kind of interesting. So you want to summon Lantern Shark first, then go for Buzzsaw and off of uh, the Lantern Shark's effect, and then with Buzzle you can search for the deck, and yeah, just go from there. Uh, now we have Barrier Statue of the Torrent, so this is one of the ways of controlling your opponent to uh, only special summoning water monsters. And now we have Tenyi Spirit Shafana, where if you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from the hand, so just no monsters on the field, just summon it instantly, and it's so conveniently a level 4 water monster, I love that. <laughs> now we have Ice Knight, this is one of the new cards that came out in Brothers of Legend, and again, so much water support in that set. But with Ice Knight, uh, this is a card from GX, but they didn't print it until late last year in 2021, and it gains 400 attack for every aqua monster you control, including itself, and once per turn you can normal summon a water monster from your hand during the main phase, but it's an activation effect, so it can still be infinity and permanence and stuff, but uh, that doesn't quite matter if you have Silent Sea Nettle and Silent Anglo, which can special summon themselves from the hand anyway if you control a water monster. The difference between these two is Silent Anglo prevents you from special summoning from the hand for the rest of the turn, which isn't really that big of a deal, and Silent Sea Nettle locks you into water monsters for the rest of the turn, and Ice Knight does the same as well, but as I'll explain when I go to the uh, Xyz deck, it kind of doesn't matter since you rely uh, heavily on water monsters. Now we have White Mirror, where you can target level 4 lower fish in your graveyard, special summon it, then you get to add a copy of that monster from the deck to your hand. And the idea with this is you summon Buzzsaw, then use it to summon Silent Angler, and then use it to XC summon and detach uh, Silent Angler to the graveyard, then activate White Mirror to special summon the Silent Angler from the graveyard, then you get to search for Silent Angler from deck to your hand, and because you control a water monster, you can summon it back, and then use your two Silent Anglers to make another XC summon. So, very useful, and um, I gotta ask with the rulings of this card, if, because uh, it searches, but it summons from the graveyard first, can it still be Ash Blossom? Like, obviously if it's DD Crowed or Ghost Belled, then it fizzles out, but because the searching happens after, can it still be Ash Blossomed? Or like, um, can you still summon the monster from the graveyard and then your opponent can Ash and... Or does it completely fade out immediately if uh, your opponent can't respond to it instantly with Ash Blossom? Now we have uh, Fury of Kaioshin, and quite a few people have never seen this card, which is funny. But you get to add Tyrannal Tribute from the deck to your hand, and if a water monster you control would be destroyed by a card effect, like Tyrannal Tribute or... Darko, Rokeki, etc., then you can banish this card from the graveyard instead. And this has helped me out so many times, because <laughs> with Terminal Tribute you can blow up the whole field, but you protect your water monsters. So it's a very one-sided, and now we have Call by the Grave, which can deal with those pesky hand traps, one for one to summon a beautiful princess, or maybe just run a third copy, I don't know, but there are some cards where uh, once you summon into the fields, like you you might have a hard time summoning another monster like Barrier Statue. It's a little risky, but 
Yeah, it, you, the idea is to swarm the field with uh, water monsters, and um, I did try running Aqua Spirit, but there were a few times where I bricked with uh, Aqua Spirit, and yeah, Aqua Spirit requires you to banish a water monster from the graveyard, and it didn't quite work, so that's why I'm running uh, White Mirror. Or who knows, maybe you just run the whole deck with uh, level 4 water monsters. But anyway, we have Harpy's Feather Duster and Twin Twisters for spell and trap removal. Then we have Turnal Tribute, and yes, that is a secret rare Turnal Tribute that I have. Uh, Infinity Impermanence, and Gozen Match. And the reason why I'm running Gozen Match is not just for the specific decks like Dragon Maids and Dinosaurs, but because Stealth Kraken treats all mod <laughs> all monsters on the field as water. And then it's a lot like zombies, where your opponent can only uh, summon zombie monsters or water monsters on the field. <laughs> and uh, as for Stealth Kraken, the reason why this card is super powerful is because during the main phase, quick effect, you can destroy a water monster your opponent controls. And pretty much they'll always control water monsters because this card uh, makes them all water. Also locks in, locks your opponent into water monsters because <laughs> it uh, goes and match if you have it on the fields. But um, you also inflict uh, effect... Uh, I was about to say PSA, but... Inflicts effect damage, so if you're low on time, then that could also come up uh, in uh, in desperate times. And then you have uh, Stealth Kraken Spawn. So when this card is destroyed, you get to special summon two Stealth Kraken Spawns from the extra deck. And keep in mind, this card is not a hard once per turn. So that means you can uh, crash this card into an opponent's monster with high attack, then summon the two Stealth Kraken Spawns. One of them will crash, and then you can special summon Stealth Kraken from the graveyard, and then activate it again activate this effect in the main phase and uh, blow up your opponent. Or you could just uh, uh, crash then um, bring back the Stealth Kraken and now you have two ways of blowing up your opponent's monsters during their main phase <laughs> during their turn. Um, but it's not like a complete loop, you know, because um, this has to be Xyz summoned to be destroyed, then activate the effect and Stealth Kraken spawn has to be destroyed when it was summoned by a number monster. <laughs> it's weirdly specific, like they're such weird Xyz monsters because they don't rely on detaching, but they kind of need the materials to special summon uh, their counterparts from the graveyard. So very weird, but it's not like an infinite loop. But, I mean, can you imagine how scary that would be if they were constantly destroyed but constantly reviving? Ooh, a uh, call by the grave would have to be uh, three to deal with this. Uh, then we have Bahamut Shark, and this is for summoning Totally Awesome. Then you have Valiant Shark Lancer. This is a lot like Stealth Kraken in a way, because it has a quick effect to pop your opponent's monsters, except it doesn't have to be face up or water. So uh, the one time I went up against a Ghost Trick player of all people, <laughs> it helped me win. It helped me... Uh, defeat their monsters, just popping their face down monsters. So it didn't need Stealth Kraken. <laughs> and that's the only time I've summoned Shark Lancer, because otherwise uh, Stealth Kraken just does the job way better. And uh, as it is a rank 5 monster, it doesn't quite matter because of uh, Buzzsaw Shark and Lantern Shark. Then we have Silent Honor Arc and Silent Honor Dark. Um, yeah, so to use a Silent Honor Dark, you do need a Silent Honor Arc in the graveyard, but with Dark, um, you don't need Arc in the graveyard to steal an opponent's monster. What you do need is if you want to revive Silent Honor Dark and gain life points, you do need the Silent Honor Arc in the graveyard. And uh, can I just say that I'm a bit underwhelmed with uh, the boss monsters in uh, Duelist of the Abyss? Bit underwhelming, including uh, Mako's boss monsters. I don't know how good the Marine Cess deck is, I haven't looked into that, but I definitely want to do an opening of that set, because the other card's so good. Uh, Bist Dweller, this is for dealing with tri Brigade players, because they cannot activate cards or effects in the graveyard. Then you have Drill Driver Vespinado, and the reason I'm running this card is because, well, Bahamas Shark cannot attack if you use its effect, but you can still rank it into Drill Driver Vespinado. The uh, problem is with uh, Ice Knight and Silent Sea Nettle is that if they lock you, if you use those, then you're locked into water monsters and Vespinado is not a water. But uh, it doesn't quite matter. But in some situations, uh, 
doing piercing damage or uh, if your opponent, if you know your opponent's going to destroy your monster, then you can have Vespinado revive one of your monsters in your graveyard and that can take a hit or maybe you have something on the field to uh, go into a rank four on the next turn. Now we have Utopia, Utopia of the Lightning, and Divine Arsenal Zeus. I was I was close to buying this card when it was like $90, and then I just pulled it from uh, Megatins. <laughs> Ooh, just, just a bit of patience. And now we're going to take a look at some extra cards. Um, I didn't include Aqua Spirit for some reason, but um, Aqua Spirit is definitely a card you can use in the Box Jellyfish deck. There is also Xyz Revive Splash, which is like Xyz Reborn, but it has another effect where you can target a water monster you control and banish this card from the graveyard and rank it up into a rank 5 monster. Then you have Right Hand Shark, which is an alternative uh, for a buzz sh Buzzsaw Shark to search, and if this card is used in Xyz material, then the Xyz monster cannot be destroyed by battle. Then you have Left Hand Shark, which is awkward because it's level Three for some reason, and there is a way of making it level four, but uh, I don't know. It's it's a weird card. Like yeah, you can summon it from the graveyard with a uh, white mirror, but I don't know. It's really it's just awkward. And the deck as as it is now is very flexible. But if anyone knows how to make this work to easily summon these two cards and then have a have an Xyz monster that cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, yeah, let me know in the comments. Then you have Dimen Dimension Slice, and I think this card is a bit underrated. Uh, when a monster is special summoned to your side of a field, target a monster your opponent controls, banish it, and if that happened to be an XC summon, then you can activate this card to turn it was set. So it's not like Infinity Impermanence where it's a hand trap. But um, yeah, a card that can just banish an opponent's monsters, I guess it's similar to Dark core if you guys remember that spell except you don't discard any cards so yeah either dark core or dimension slice but if you can do it during your opponent actually no you can't do it during your opponent's turn because you have to set this card it's but it's an option uh torpedo takedown this card just has the effect that submersible carrier aeroshark should have always had when it was printed in real life which is the effect from the anime. You can detach and exceed material from a water monster you control and inflict 400 damage for every card in your hand. But it's they gave it an additional effect where you can banish this card and a water exceeds monster from your graveyard and draw two, which could be uh, very handy for the deck with uh, Pot of Desires Limited. Then we have Numbers Protection, where uh, it can negate... Anything if you control a number monster like Stealth Kraken. And it can also set itself back to the field like Salomon Great Roar. Oops. Then you have Diamond Dust that was printed in Duelist Saga. And this guy was kind of a joke when it came out. But now with uh, Stealth Kraken that it treats all monsters on the field as water. Then yeah, I think this card deserves a reprint now. It's like Tyrannal Tribute but you, you can activate it anytime. Uh, Spiritual Water Art Owie. I do have a playset of this, and I've been wondering if I should play it or not, because it's a trap, which means it could be slow, but um, tribute a water monster, look at your opponent's hand, and send one card from their hand to the grave. I've been... I don't know. I don't know how good that is, because even tributing a monster you control, like Bahamut Shark, is once you get the toad on the field, it's done its job. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know about that one. Uh, Gravity Bind... Um, I mean, you're relying on your Xyz monsters for most of it, so, uh, yeah, unless your opponent is playing Lynx and Xyz, then it's kind of dated. <laughs> it's definitely a dated, but I don't know, it could still come in handy. And then there's, there can only be one, which is probably a way better restriction, where each player can only control one monster of each type. And that could come in handy with this deck, how you have... Uh, fish, sea serpent, and aqua monsters. Or I don't think there's any sea serpents? Oh, well, you have um, worms with um, Shafana. <laughs> but yeah, for uh, dinosaurs, any dragon decks, uh, drytrons. Yeah, definitely useful against those. And then anti spell fragrance. Um, this is a card that I was running with uh, Imperial Order, but now Imperial Order is banned. Um, so. There are definitely other restrictions. There's also Summon Limit, which I did run that card initially, but it was also a hindrance on the deck itself because uh, you can only summon twice, but you need to summon twice. 
to make a third summon into an XC summon, so uh, summon limit didn't quite age so well. And then I'll just show uh, side deck some of the other cards like DD Crow, older printing, newer printing. Evo is just rare, but yeah, there's a clear difference. Um, effect Veilers, Twin Twisters, Draw and Lockbird, System Down for um, for Sky Strikers, Drytrons, and by the red chance you run into a Cyber Dragon player and Dark Ruler known more. So that's a deck. That is Box Jellyfish. And if any of you know how to make the deck even better, uh, what restrictions or floodgate cards, like uh, there can only be one and goes in match. If you can think of any of any other cards like those, then let me know in the comments. And uh, like they say in Rango, if you control the water, you control everything. <laughs> so until next time, take care, mates.